In the studio here, we're able to sort of work with various mock-ups, at both at full scale and in model form. But here, it's made out of styrofoam. So in the gallery in LA, it's on the wall vertically, and you know you sort of see it shifting from this kind of flatness to then this three-dimensional quality, almost sort of drawing a line and being able to pull it away from the wall or push it into the wall, which is the case in the large vertical arc line double push pull. This is concave convex, which is essentially a pure form that shifts from a convex surface to a concave surface over about 10 feet. This piece is very much connected to the light and shadow work that is on exhibition in LA right now, except that this piece is, is now rendered with this bronze coating. It's, it's finished as a bronze piece because it is an actual bronze coating that has this high gloss finish. So now it's, it's really bringing in reflection. It begins to merge ideas of light and shadow with the mirror works, with the reflective works. You know, a lot of my work, it is about interaction, about moving the position of the viewer in relation to the surface. And so as you move around this work, you know, the world around you begins to be wrapped onto it. It begins to, you know, flip orientation. It begins to be stretched and turned and bent. And, you know, I can say that this piece and this idea, combined with some of the larger complex surface discs that are in LA, are sort of where a lot of the work is pushing right now. One of the best parts about the new studio here is the view here from the second floor office space looking out to the Chocolate Mountains beyond. You know, we can see that transformation over the course of the day. You know, as I'm sitting, you know, at my desk drawing and working on projects, I sort of this ever-present view of the mountains here. Uh, this is Crease. You know, very much are inspired by the changing light conditions out here in the Coachella Valley. You know, driving here to the studio today, you can look out and see the Chocolate Mountains out in the distance. You know, it's about three o'clock, and you see the shadow moving across those surfaces and how it can change from dark to light in a matter of minutes or over the course of the day, from something that's highly textured and three-dimensional to something that is entirely two-dimensional in a flat, singular color silhouette. Crease really touches on that subtlety of change and the lighting conditions of the environment. So right now we're in the studio with the roll-up door here and the light bouncing in off of the floor and you're beginning to see this portion here that's the concave portion. but a little bit more lit because it's towards this bounced light whereas the convex portion is a little bit more dark but you can see this kind of shaving of the light, this kind of, kind of, kind of gradient of it over the course. Ultimately, this piece is really has a trace of drawing within its structure in that it's composed of five lines. And out of that line work, out of that initial structure, the surface is created, a surface of shadow and light. In the front salon of Royal Projects in downtown LA right now, there are three eight-foot diameter pieces that are called complex surfaces, discs one through three. And those pieces really have grown out of the faceted disc series that I'm standing next to, where I'm committing to build 100 unique discs, all 30 inches, all the same light, all as part of this light and shadow series. You know, I think what's exciting about this show in LA is that the middle salon shows work that was originally exhibited at Dartmouth College during my residency this year in the spring and really kind of shows sort of the roots of the light and shadow work. The complex surfaces, the large discs, now sort of take the knowledge that I've found within this group of work and applies it to sort of where I see the work headed.
and wherever these pieces go, they can all be turned and positioned to align themselves with the reality of the conditions within the space that they're going to be seen. When you are confronted with the scale of the complex disks, you can move around them. They sort of necessarily you know, desire you to interact with them, to you know, experience their three-dimensionality. One of them extends out from the wall by four and a half feet. But on all three, when you are about eight or 10 feet away and you are centered with it, it actually flattens to become this perfect circle. And I love allowing the brain to exist in this blurred state between two dimensions and three dimensions. It flattens to become a circle and you question, you know, is this actually a painting? But you know that you just saw its three dimensionality. So as you shift and move around that axis, the piece really reveals itself and allows the brain to So the tall vertical piece in the gallery is called Arcline Double Push Pull. And it's the only freestanding piece in the Arcline series. So you can really circle around it and it presents itself both as this kind of thick piece as you look at it frontally when, as soon as you walk into the middle salon. But then as you cycle around to the side, it shows its thinness and the way it's lit right now you can see the brightness of the line work as it begins to push out and then at the top and the brightness as it begins to push out towards the bottom on the opposite side live in these blurred states.